you know, mainstream tech outlets are kind of terrible. So a few days ago, this article came out. Windows 11 may not be as popular as Microsoft had hoped. And not just on Tech Radar, on a bunch of tech outlets, all reporting the exact same article. And I'm perfectly happy to look for a reason to laugh about Microsoft, to joke on Microsoft, and find any reason to say that Windows is terrible. But this article isn't based on a quote from Microsoft, maybe someone high up in the company, some one random engineer. It's not based on the stock price going down or anything like that. Literally all it is based on is the fact that Windows 11 doesn't have 100% market share. I'm not even joking. The main point of the article is that Windows 11 only has 19.4% of the Windows market share. And during March, the market share only went up by 0.1%. So what this means is that Windows 11 is a dead project. Everybody who's ever going to migrate from Windows 10, Windows 8, or Windows 7 over to Windows 11 has now already done so. That's the end of that. Microsoft is now going to collapse or whatever it is you want to think. Right now, we are roughly five to six months into the launch of Windows 11. And without the context of the previous Windows releases, so 10, 8.1, 8, 7, so on and so forth, it's hard to say whether 20% is a good number. Should it be higher? Should it be lower? What does 20% actually mean? But the other problem is the data itself and whether that data is actually good data. So this data comes from a group called Ad Duplex. Ad Duplex basically runs a advertising network, an advertising piece of software that you can integrate into your Windows apps. So if you want to have ads in your Windows Store apps, things like that, Ad Duplex is one method you could use. It's integrated into roughly 5,000 apps, which isn't every single app out there, but it's a fairly wide range that should give you a at least somewhat representative state of the data. But since market share like this isn't directly made public by Microsoft, it's always going to be an estimate. And when you're working with estimates like that, it's very important to check multiple data sources to make sure that what you're seeing somewhat aligns with what's actually happening. So over on Global Stat Counter, it's got Windows 11 a little bit lower. I've used this site previously for things like browser market share. This has Windows 11 at 8.45% and still has Windows 7 at 12%. I really hope Windows 7 isn't at 12%, but... I think that's certainly possible. And a great source of data as always is the Steam hardware survey. Now, because this is focused on gaming, the results are gonna be skewed a bit more in that fashion. For example, Windows 7 surprisingly still has 4%, but is much lower than what we saw over here. I think among the general population, 12% is certainly viable, but because a lot of newer games just will not work on 7, you can't really use that in many cases. And as it says here, Windows 11 usage is at 16.84%, which I think is probably somewhat close to the actual number. If I had to guess, I would say the actual number is somewhere between 15 and 20%. But is that good? Well, let's look at other Windows releases and see what happened. But prior to Windows 10, finding that data broken down month by month, broken down into the different versions of the Windows, is kind of difficult to find, and I haven't actually found anything that seems like a good source, except in one place, the Steam hardware survey, which has been going on for like 12 or so years, giving us three extra Windows releases. To make things consistent, all of these numbers are going to be set six months after the release of that version of Windows. So Windows 10 had 28.81%, Windows 8.1 8.53% and Windows 8, 9.92%. But don't forget the context around those releases. So Windows 8 was a massive UI redesign with the start screen and you got this thing. It was terrible then, it's terrible now, and I'm happy I don't have to see it. 8.1 came around and it was still basically 8, but you weren't forced to use this. So people who were still burnt on 8, I don't see many of them feeling the need to go migrate over. They're just going to go back to 7 and then wait for something better. Then 10 came along, and 10 wasn't 8. And that was the important thing. It wasn't 8, so it was better. But then 11 happened. 11 was basically 10, except it had more hardware restrictions, it had more spyware, and 
15 to 20% seems like a reasonable amount. People don't hate it, people don't love it, it's just sort of there. And in the grand scheme of Windows, it's not historically low. Now, compared to XP, everything is low. XP was around forever, it's still around today, it sh shouldn't be, but XP was the biggest success they ever had. So compared to that, everything is disappointing, but compared to modern Windows releases, it is what it is. At some point, basically every Windows user is going to migrate to Windows 11. But when it happens, is going to be very different depending on your context of using Windows. For the general consumer who doesn't really care about their computer, they probably bought a laptop three or five years ago, it still has whatever was installed on it at the time. It probably even has some of the default applications still. They're never going to install Windows 11. They will be on Windows 11 when that computer breaks and they buy a new one. I guarantee there is someone in your life right now who is still using a Windows 7 or Windows 8 computer. They bought it 10 or so years ago. They have no plans to ever update it. They're still doing their banking and all of their stuff in that system as if there is no problem whatsoever. So people staying on Windows 10 doesn't seem that surprising to me. But in the corporate space, that is where the biggest and the quickest changes can occur. So there's a company called Riverbed. They basically run what amounts to a rootkit. It's employee management software. It lets you see what your employees are doing and see the hardware on their system. They release a report called the State of the Enterprise Report, basically talking about what the general corporate space is using, what sort of hardware and things like that. If you'd like to see the full report for yourself, I'll leave it linked in the description down below. But what is important is a couple of key takeaways. The fact that 34% of corporate devices cannot run Windows 11 today. Windows 11 has a lot of requirements, some of which are reasonable, others not so much. 4 gigabytes of memory, I wouldn't want to use Windows with less than that anyway. 64 gigabytes of storage, once again, you shouldn't be using Windows if you have less than that. UEFI Secure Boot, a DirectX compatible graphics card with WGDM 2.0 driver, which is basically any GPU released within the past like six or seven years, and TPM 2.0. Everyone talks about TPM 2.0, but 19.45% of corporate devices need a storage upgrade. That might sound crazy, but up until a couple of years ago, you could still buy a new laptop with 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage. That's ridiculous but not unusable. It's relatively common to see a business where instead of having data on each individual computer, you have the data stored on a central server. And then basically everyone who wants to access that data accesses it through a network drive. And then all you need to have on each computer is the OS and any programs they need to access. And in that case, you might as well just have as little storage as possible. 10% of the devices will need to be replaced entirely due to TPM 2.0, and then 11% can be upgraded in situations where that's viable, but in many cases, it may just lead to systems being replaced. And because of all of the problems, 12.23% of devices will need to be replaced entirely, but 22.29% can be upgraded. Now, across every single industry which uses computers, which is every single industry, that's not really that big of a deal. Only 33% of devices need to be addressed in some way. But what's going to happen is certain businesses are going to be really affected, while others are not affected whatsoever. Because if you go and deploy devices to your employees, it's very likely you deploy the same device. So everybody in a department or everybody in that business has that same device which is supported or isn't supported. So moving to Windows 11 for that company would require upgrading every single person, which in many cases might be really, really expensive. And considering that up until six months ago, all of the software they were using was built to work on Windows 10, and that's probably not gonna change anytime soon, it doesn't seem like a major priority to move to the newest thing that Microsoft releases, especially when support is still going to last until 2025. So there's plenty of time to work out how that migration is going to happen. And if they can't work it out by then, there's always the paid extended support to basically drag it out for as long as they need. All of this has been a really long way to say that Microsoft 
is basically doing what they do. They know that people will move eventually because they just don't have a choice. Where else are they going to go? They're not going to go to Mac OS. They're not going to go to Linux. It's definitely not going to happen. So they're going to have to come to Windows 11 eventually. We'll just play the waiting game. So when you see articles like this, do a bit of digging. See if what they are saying actually lines up with reality. Are they saying something that is really happening, or are they just taking some bit of data and then making some bigger point about it with no evidence of that being the case? Because in many cases, nothing is really happening, and all the article is trying to do is either confirm your biases or make you angry by saying something you don't like. And speaking of things I don't like, the end of the video. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, it's definitely better, pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. A gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.